Hello and welcome to me build of the Husky forward control Land Rover. It's going to be a Sada Code 3 but it's going back to its original colour. They were used in the British Army at one point and it's a fairly rareish vehicle but anyway here we go and first off it's a Dada beach buggy. I've put this on because Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers was asking people if they had one. Anyway, here it is as I said in blue. Anyway, on with the build of the Husky. And here's the example I'm starting with. As my fingers intrude in show. And it's quite a battered example. Anyway, one strip down, we have here a damaged bumper and I decided to remedy it from my steel stock with some brass H section bar, cut down it made a good bumper as it goes when you see it actually mounted on it here I'm sanding for the bumper to be mounted, I've took the other side off and sanding down the actual chassis. Very brittle on these old huskies. <laughs> sanding down and stuff with the wire wheel so to speak I've decided to spray it in it's actually an old model master colour it's dark olive apparently looks fairly light to me but hey ho light olive must be a lot lighter and I've chosen a sort of military colour because mainly they were a military vehicle in the UK and that's where most of the build went. Some were used on farms and stuff but they were very much military. They weren't a huge, they weren't a hugely popular vehicle. 
with the civilian public because they were absolute gas guzzlers. A friend had one and oh, they were a big petrol engine, big off-road vehicle, almost comparable, comparable to a truck and the fuel they used was astronomical. Anyway here I'm just giving the wheels a brush clean. I tried taking the paint off with brake fluid and it didn't come off. But it's not going to be the most tidy build. Because on these huskies, they've you try building them and stripping them down gently. But the edge, it wasn't good plastic they used. From new and with edge now. It starts breaking so easy when you start working with it. I snapped the chassis about three times as you'll see later and I've had to super glue it and bodge it back together. So it's not a hugely brilliant job. But anyone taking on these huskies, you've, it's not like Matchbox and Corgi and the like. Corgi Dinky, they're tough you can work with them. The parts they have are really tough, but these old huskies and probably the Corgi Juniors to some extent, although a lot of the Corgi Juniors, they've got the plastic situation together. There, I'm just cleaning the screen anyway then. But these, the old ones, they just fall apart, the chassis, as you're cleaning up. And here I'm putting on the olive, another layer of the olive green paint. Oh no, I'm not, sorry, it's done there, I've done the headlights. And the side lights, so here, I'm just giving it a light coating of gloss. Ready for detail painting. I'm only giving it one light coating because the model acrylic on its own it's sort of it's not tough and resilient let's put it this way so it's gonna the gloss over it makes it more tough anyway I'm here I'm gluing the chassis back in position using super glue and I'm using Zip Kicker Accelerator to make the glue dry faster. Once I've put it on, I apply glue with a cocktail stick so you're not using the tube and getting it everywhere. Although with my shaky hands I've had it in eyebrows and everything. Swallowed half of it when I've opened bottles, don't do that. Not recommended. It's pretty, pretty awful really, I've had better. Anyway there, I'm just pressing the chassis in, I'll put a dab on the rear end where the rivet was. I'll get the zip kicker and give it a quick spray with that. You'll probably just see it get wet. No, you didn't even see it get wet though. Anyway, here I'm holding the front of the chassis down. Well, the front part of the rear chassis. Because <laughs> it snapped across the middle there, as you can see. So I tried underneath and it didn't actually touch it. You press down and it wasn't even touching the glue where I was putting it. So I had to filter it in down the sides. As you can see holding it down and it's not even touching. Not even stringing out or anything. So, take two. I decided to filter it in down the sides. Which was a whole lot better idea. Just 
just get some glue down the insides of it. But on the outside, there you are, going in. It's basically going in between the chassis and the truck body. There I've sprayed the zip kicker on and to the sold it down. So now for the front end of the chassis. Which there I've placed it in place. And here I'm dropping a drop of super glue in to the front part. Spraying it with zip kicker. <laughs> well there you go. You can see I'm just dropping the drop in there. Mooch it around. There we go, a bit more in. Get the zip kicker and it's the quick spray. There you are, sprayed in. And bump. It's in now I'll do the rear part of the front end. In the middle of the truck to bond it back to the other half of the chassis. Can't really see for me big bloody hoof in the way. As Gorgy Bob says, fingers like tits. I'm joking apart though, I really do wish I had my younger hands and eyes. I think there's a few of the restorers and custom guys out there that'll admit it. They wish they had the hands and eyes they had when they were 18. But hey ho, keep going. That's where it's always a bummer with modelling and doing these type of hobbies. You start off young and you've not got the skills and you make untidy jobs and as you progress and all get older you've got the skills, you know what you're doing, you can do a tidy job but that's when your body and eyesight starts failing. Bit of a bummer and opposite way rounds life is but hey ho, we do what we can. And here we have, I'm just mixing here some, I didn't have an orange and I wanted to use a flat colour rather than silver and clear orange for my indicators. So I mixed some out of a Vallejo yellow and a dot of Vallejo red. Excuse and there we go, get a nice little orange going. You have to be very careful, it takes, when you're mixing such a light colour as yellow, you need quite a bit of the yellow and just a small dot of the red, because the red will overpower it with it being such a light colour. And there we go, tremor in everywhere. Just put in dots of orange for the indicators. Gradually, almost, almost, almost. Almost, and there we go. Can't say that one, bugger, gone, done. No, come back and have another go. I painted the bumper. I went back after anyway and did touch-ins and stuff. Made tidied up. Because you're not, you're not really committed to any sort of time scales or anything. And when doing it in military colours, it's easier to touch in. 
and correct your mistakes but there we go that's some bits of detail and all it remains to say is we're coming up to the finished result so I'll say thank you to my subscribers if you haven't subscribed yet please press that button and if you want notifications please press the bell for notifications but anyway here we are with the finished result looking fairly pretty the windscreen was cleaned then buffed with silver water so then washed off then dipped in Tamiya X22 left to dry and remounted in and there's a number plate painted on and basically that's about it oh and I used some null, nem uh, null noil for the grill and the under chassis just to give it a bit of a wash so it fitted in better and looked better per the original it looked a bit chunky really anyway thanks to everybody for watching and bye for now and I'll catch you in my next video ta for now